My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure this book is always in front of you when we are working together. Today is our day number 20. And today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 89. The very first problem on the page, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Number 108, 108, 9, and 10. The three problems that you see in the second column, on the right-hand column. I'm going to read the problem to you, then I'm going to get out of the frame. You're going to pause the video, do it yourself first, and then we'll do it together. You know the routine. Here we go. It says the symbol, this symbol right here, which is called delta. This symbol denotes one of the four arithmetic operations. They don't tell us which one. But they tell us it, it denotes one of these four operate, basic arithmetic operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We are also told that 6 delta 3 is less than or equal to 3. The question is if, that is, if that's the case, then which must be true? There are three statements here. First statement says 2 delta 2 equals 0. Second one says 2 delta 2 equals 1. The third one says 4 delta 2 equals 2. And these are the answer choices 1 only, 2 only, 3 only, 1 and 2 only, or all three. Go ahead and do it yourself. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Well, two things we have to keep in mind. First thing is that we do not know which one, it just says one. So if we can figure out only one that applies here, that's fine. But if it turns out that we cannot figure out which one of these four is true for, then all of them that is true for will have to try the three statements for all of them. Because just if we try only one, well, we'll, we'll take a look at it when the time comes. Let's, let's start. 6 delta 3 is equal to 3. Let's, let's do the addition. 6 plus 3 obviously is not less than or equal to 3. So we know it does not apply to addition. Let's do the subtraction. 6 minus 3 is less than or equal to 3. 6 minus 3 is 0, which is true. 0 is less than or equal to 3. So that does work, which means, which means this operation that is given to us one of the operation it could be subtraction. Let's do this multiplication. Six six times three is not less than or equal to three. So it's not it's not it's not the multiplication. Let's do the division. Six divided by three is less than or equal to three. But that is also true. Six divided by three is two, which is less than or equal to three, which means we do not know now the one operation they're talking about, whether it's this one or that one which means we'll have to try both of them because the question says, the question does not say which of the following may be true. If you try just one, then it may be true, but it says which of the following must be true in order to be, in order for us to be 100% certain, we have to try both of them. Let's look at the first statement. The first statement says, 2 delta 2 equals 0. We only have to try the subtraction and division. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So that is true. That is true. Which means first statement may be true. Which means first statement may be true. As you can see, it does not work for the second one. 2 divided by true does not equal 0. But it does work for it does work for subtraction. And since we do not know whether this one operation they're talking about, whether it is subtraction or division, we do not know that, which means this is a possible candidate. The first term is something that may be true, that may not be true, depending on which one it is that they are talking about. Let's look at second one. Second one says 2 delta 2 is equal to 1. Again, 2 minus 2 does not equal 1. It does not work for it. You will see, even though we don't want to go anymore, we know sec uh, the 2 is not, not, not going to work. But just to show you, 2 divided by 2, 2, 2 divided by 2 on the other hand does work. So in this case, division works, but subtraction does not. Let's look at third one. Again, in second case, we cannot tell for sure that this must be true. This may be true. If they're talking about if if by one if by one operation if they mean division, then this is true. But if it turns out that by one operation if they mean subtraction, that is not true. It, so this is something that may be true, that may not be true. Let's, let's look at third one. The third one says 4 delta 2 is equal to 2. 4 minus 2 
4 minus 2, well that does work. Let's try the division. 4 divided by 2, well that works. You see it works for both of them. Since it works for both of these operations, then it doesn't matter. It, it, it makes no difference whether the one operation they're talking about is this one or that one. It doesn't matter which one it is. In either case, this is true. This statement is true. Therefore, this statement must be true. The answer is 3 only. The answer in this case is C. Let's look at the next problem, shall we? Number 109. Again in 109, as soon as I set up the problem, you pause the video and do it yourself, okay? In 109 we are told that 25% of N is equal to 37.5% of M. And the question is, what they're looking for is, what's the value of, what's the value of 12N over M. Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video. Let's see what we can do. So this is what we're looking for. 12N over M. Don't forget that. Well, 25%, 25% means over 100, we are told of N equals 37.5% of M. As you can clearly see, 100 plays no role. We are interested in N over M, N over M, so there is N, there is M, let's bring the M on this side. So that implies that N over M must equal 37 and a half is going to stay there over 25 over 25 I don't like this 25 business so we're going to multiply top and bottom by 4 make it a nice 100 now we have to figure out what 37, 37 and a half times 4 is let's do it on the top we could do it here actually we could do it here if you wanted to here we go so 30 times 4, 30 times 4 is 120. You have to understand that this 3 is not a 3. There, there is a reason why it's called 37. It's 37 because it's a 30 and a 7. 30 times 4 is 120. 7 times 4, 7 times 4 is going to be 28. And then half of 4 is 2. Well, there you go. It's very straightforward actually. So that adds up to, that's a 0. Oh, it's exactly 150, what do you know? It's exactly 150. This quantity is 150 and then 25 times 4 is going to give us 100. Oh, we're almost there. It's, two over, it's 3 over 2. Divide top and bottom by 25. So n over m, I don't have the room, otherwise I would have continued here. n over m, it turns out, is 3 over 2. But we're not interested in n over m, we're interested in 12 times n over m. That's the question. 12 times. So let's multiply both sides by 12. And we'll have our answer. 2 goes away, 12 becomes a 6, and the answer is 18. This quantity is 18. This is the last one. Last one says, 110, says, last year, J grew by one inch. We are further told that S grew by 200% more than J. This is important to understand. In the real exam, of course, they do not put that in capital letter and they do not circle it, but that's the important word there. S grew not by 200%, but 200% more than J. Here's the question. The question is, how many inches did S grow last year? 
As you can clearly see, it's a very straightforward, very simple question. There's nothing to it. Pause the video and do it yourself. So here's the deal. We already know, obviously, that 100%, 100% of 1 is 1. That's not something earth shattering. Therefore, 200%. This is this is, as you can see. 200% of 1 must be 2. It's bloody silly. Which means J grew, it says J grew by 200% more. 200% of 1 is 2. J grew by 2 inches more than J. Or rather, S grew by 2 inches more than J. J we knew grew by 1 inches. The question is how many inches did S grow? It must have, S must have grown. This guy grew by one inches and this guy grew two inches more than this guy, so he must have grown by three inches. That's all. That was it. We're gonna call it a day. That's the end of the page. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll continue with the next next page, okay? Bye now.